Uh, welcome to Proving Grounds. Um, I'd like to start out by thanking our sponsors on the stellar, stellar level, Verispite, Bertivity, Tenable, Amazon, and Source of Knowledge. Please visit them out in the Chill Out Lounge. So I want to remind everyone this track is being recorded. So if you have questions at the end, please use the mic at the front or I'll run a mic to you at the, at the end of the talk. So our next talk is on the automation of penetration testing and the future by Hayden Johnson. Let's all welcome Hayden. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks very much for coming. Bit of a full house, bit, bit more difficult than practicing with three or four people. So um, I'm feeling really fortunate to be here, mind blown, actually. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, title of the talk is Automation of Pen Testing, What, Why, and the Future. Uh, two second, who am I? I do pen testing. I have the OSCP certification in GXPN recently. Um, my approach is to work with blue teams instead of just throwing the report over. I try to actually help security instead of break things and be awesome. Um, so I guess let's start. Uh, three years ago, I was back home in Melbourne with someone telling me to do audit because security was not where the money is. And they were pushing me to do uh, audit and cyber security was career suicide. But here I am now presenting in InfoSec and you guys are all lovely. So a big finger to those guys. <laughs> anyway, we're not here to hear my jaded life of starting a career in InfoSec. We're here to learn about my jaded thoughts on the way of automation of pen testing. So thank you in advance for listening, and I hope I can impart some knowledge that's, that's valuable. So last year I was at Derbycon 5, a panel discussion raised concerns about the future of pen testing for pen testers, VAs, and the integrity of the practice. This quickly covered things like pen test puppy mills, what's a VA, what's a pen test, both the same thing, and how they overlap each other like tomorrow. So, so this is just a, my thoughts on this. So just a two second note, this is on my own time and dime, so all my thoughts are my own. They don't represent unicorns, my company, or anything else. So what am I planning to quickly cover? Covering uh, the trend of automation pen testing, pen test puppy mills, small and big business reasons for automation, pen testers, exploit devs, and what they hold for the future, and what we can try to do to fight back. So I guess I'll start. <coughs> this culture of good enough, we all know it, right? We want a VA or a pen test just to tick the box. We want the report, so we have the report, right? But like you and I, will we actually see anyone do anything to fix it or any action on the recommendations? This is extremely frustrating for myself and probably all of you guys. Um, all of this is pushing the commoditization of VA and pen testing. Has been for years. Anyone can do a VA and pen test, right? Run a tool? Easy mode, I guess. At least that's what everyone thinks. This is a trend of automation. So those selling pen testing want to do the smallest amount for the most money, and those getting pen tested want the minimalist completed to make them not liable for any breaches. They want to be like, we were pwned, but we were compliant. So uh, target breach years ago, they were PCI compliant, if I can remember right. They want their automated scan, and this is pushing the dollars and profit and the skills needed that way less funding for more skills and equipment and infrastructure. Pen tests have become VAs, so I'm unsure what's actually being sold as a VA, maybe just a scan. And this is now penetration testing and how it's become commoditized. We have packages A, B, and C. We only sell these instead of customizing each engagement to the client. We just have the packages to make it easy. There is no confidence in penetration testing and customers feel that they will be a given a glorified scan with half-hearted folks from the network. I think that's a quote from a, a red teamer in Montreal. Uh, this is where pen test puppy mills come in. We have the automation pushing down the price, so now we have plenty of, of pen test puppy mills fighting for the cheapest price. When companies want better security, they choose price, not security. Yes, you heard that right. Instead of choosing skill and talent, the decision is made on price. This is ludicrous and quite a big problem. It's a big problem because, like myself, there's less money for an engagement. You only get minimal work. Smaller engagements, smaller man hours mean scanning. 
Yes, less time pushes you to make your methodology more efficient so you're not just wasting time in a crappy pen tester, but that line is easily crossed when it's drawn down into one or two days and you have multiple subnets. It does not matter if you're elite with all the certs or skills, minimal budget means you're just gonna scan. It's also another big problem because different skills mean different findings, different exploits, different vulnerabilities. Uh, these don't really happen in automated findings, they're all known. So the cheapest place is not gonna have any great talent at all, and if they somehow do, they're not gonna keep it for long. So as the slide shows, we just wanna scan and scan, make the report look nicer, and look nicer again, and then send it. I've experienced this. Uh, does anyone else wanna put their hand up to say they've just done a scan as a, PA, a pen test? Yes, we've all done it. And it's extremely frustrating for us passionate people. So this also then leads to outsourcing. Some countries have cheaper labor, labor so it makes sense to use them, right? Back when I was starting, well before I started, same company, was outsourcing the work to like Argentina or India as like some extended delivery service, outsourcing pen testing. Doesn't really make sense because it's based on our skill. So they were doing it for a country known for extremely cheap rates, interesting idea. So the cheaper guys would do the pen test or the VA, attempt to write up of the report, the technical pen testers back at base would then review the reports and fix them up. So the technical people at base were re reviewing reports. The passionate and technical people weren't doing the work. They were just reviewing the reports. That would make me hate my life. So that's the manager's job. So after a while, I guess you can tell where I'm going with this, those people left the company. One by one, well, probably because we're all close-knit, it was like in big groups. So then those people were doing the reports. So no local talent or in-person talent means no market share. The talent pool moved on. So this was a gain for the short term for the company, but really a big loss in the long term. So you just can't outsource pen testing unless you do it appropriately. Oh, and another story on this, I was once told to go to a client to set up some Kali jump boxes. So I'm like a new grad, couple of weeks in, excited, go set it up, talk to the client, yeah, I'm gonna be doing the pen testing. I get back to base and the manager's like, yeah, that's, that, that's for India, Argentina. I'm like, what? So they, the client thought I was doing the work, but no, like, ah. Oh. So pen test poppy mills and outsourcing really results in unmotivated, skilled, and, and unmotivated testers. So we have this automation of pen testing trend, pen test poppy mills as a result. So what are the basic reasons, or some of the reasons, that big businesses or small businesses ask for automation? Businesses are either the symptom or the cause. I haven't really decided or added blame, but it's a problem. It's a bit hard for small companies. They do not have free money. Some may just be surviving month to month, and any profit is really needed. They do not have money to throw at problems. They do not have a budget for a security team. They just want to survive day to day mom and pop shop making some living. Security in general is probably not in their mindset. The budget allows a sysadmin that does all the things. They just want to survive and if they have any talent, they're not going to keep it for long. I, I'm going to use my nerdiness and like it to MMO guilds. If anyone plays World of Warcraft or used to play World of Warcraft, you start as a noob, you join in, <laughs> you join a noob guild, you get as good gear as you can at that guild, then you go up to a medium guild and you get better and better gear till you max out, then you jump to another guild. And by guild, I mean company. We each keep jumping for more money or opportunities. And small companies just, just can't compete with this. So big companies. Well, big companies are not in a really bad situation at all. They're just big, AKA slow and dumb, and even dumber shareholders. They throw money at all the things. They have deep, complex politics to dance around for anything you want to do, and as a result, anything for them moves really slow. They require justification for anything. Complex networks, like some CBC attacks, uh, legacy everything as a result. And did I mention they have politics? Politics, all the things. Being big and old, they have old policies. So you Americans that have your Declaration of Independence, it was written 
however long ago in mind for A. So what it ma meant back then probably doesn't really mean or take into account what's here and now. So I'm sure it was written with the idea of free speech, but what about your Wi-Fi connecting to a Darth Vader toaster? Probably not. So in summary, small and big businesses just, or small businesses just want to keep the network up. Big businesses just want the problem to go away so they can keep making money. Unfortunately, this issue is the same with blue teamers. Companies will want to buy the, blue, the blinky boxes because, hey, the blinky box does all the things, right, from the vendors. But it's also cheaper than hiring staff on, say, $50,000 a year for four years. But the blinky box is not going to catch anything in four years, or even if it does the day you install it. So we have automation of pen testing trend, pen test puppy mills, and business reasons for this. So what does this result in? A big bag of confusion on what a pen test and vulnerability assessment is. In the eyes of the consumer, there is little difference between a vulnerability assessment and a penetration test. They do notice pricing. <coughs> so back in the day, I tweeted that we needed some clarity on terms, because everything is everything. And I was just flabbergasted at all the different terms there are and what means what. So a Twitter friend created a blog to help clarify the definitions. As you can see on this page, there are so many terms, and obviously not just related to pen testing, but you get the idea. If we cannot understand the key difference between a VA and a pen test, how on earth can we then understand adversarial emulation or even a simple purple team exercise? We just don't. So I'm sure everyone's like, oh, you ask person A what a pen test is, you get one answer. You ask what a person B what a pen test is, another answer. There's no definitions. Now, it's our industry. Profit is a big motivator for un an unscrupulous agenda, and InfoSec is no stranger when it comes to shady practices. So FOD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and snake oil. Our industry will take an ambiguous term like penetration testing and reduce it down to the lowest denominator to make the most profit. Pen advanced pen penetration testing is different from pen testing, right? Well, you would hope all pen tests are advanced. That's the point of their job. The other part of the problem is the word penetration testing. Some have used goal-oriented penetration testing to differentiate this from a simple vulnerability scan or assessment, depending on the goals, just so that penetration tests differ. And then red teaming is a whole kettle of fish on its own. Some companies are selling red teaming to claim back the old penetration testing, which is in effect making more dollars off what we used to do as a pen test. Uh, so we, it's all over the place. So we have this trend of automation, scanning, and a confusion on terms. Scanners run on finding vulnerability. So what will happen to the people that find the vulnerabilities that go into the scanners? AKA, what will happen to the exploit developers? We have to be able to run scanning tools as a pen tester. Company environments are too big to do without. So we do need automation. We don't just, fu we don't just scan and then say, here's the Nessus Qualys report, go, go, go do it. We understand the findings for each business risk, qualitative and quantitative risks. So a credit card company is going to care about different things than those a hospital with health data will. Point in case, the recent ra ransomware attacks with hospitals, just diff different things. That's pretty simple. So we analyze the dollar amount of the impact, the qualitative risk, the chance of the occurrence with the goal of helping the business understand their business risk. If you just run a scan, it, not much value. Instead of it, we're just saying hacker can get shell done pwned, basically. We also need some scripting skills, understanding of programming and networking to al allow us to edit the tools. Some basic exploit development is used here. So what happens for exploit developers? So with exploit development, it's bug hunting, finding vulnerabilities, and all the things. These are top tier skills. And these are needed to keep feeding the lower skills, the economy of VA and pen testing, with not only new things to do, but to learn, because we're all interested. An exploit developer's cycle is that they find an exploit or develop one better than a POC that just crashes the application. It's then put into the scanners for scalability, because that exploit developer can't go develop exploits in every environment. 
So then it feeds into the vulnerability scanner, and while we're scanning all the things, the exploit developer tries to find other vulnerabilities, and it keeps this healthy life cycle going. We need this skill. We need to keep feeding the scanners, and InfoSec is always changing. Technology changes, so we need them. In a nutshell, we have talent from easy to hard all over the spectrum. There is motivation to move up the path and keep learning. But with this push for automation, what do you see happening here? The talent, currently all over the spectrum. Automation can build exploits, right? Automation can fix open source tools if they don't work. While the talent pool is gonna sink, gonna shrink, <laughs> at least in the white hat world. Since there will be the jobs in scanning, there will be little demand for exploit developers. No one will be able to afford them. And no one is going to want to learn those skills because it takes quite a lot of time. There's no reward. And passion can only get you so far before you say, hey, I really need a job to feed myself and my family, to get bread on the table. Less, there will be less exploit developers and bug hunters, less vulnerability researchers, meaning less security for everyone or exploit developers will find things that whether they sell them to the vendors or the white hat world, probably not. So we're gonna lose all the talent. So in short, uh, scanning all the things, there's a confusion on terms and less money to go around. The world is foobarred. There'll be less money to pay the talent. So there'll be cheaper, faster, less skilled pen tests being executed meaningless vulnerabilities found, if any. Less vulnerabilities being identified means more unknown vulnerabilities. But, so criminals will find all the things and sell them on the black market. There will be lots of vulnerabilities, just the black hat market will be booming with them. So, since we have the penetrate automation of pen testing, confusion on terms, and pen test puppy mills, and the world going to shit, <laughs> What can I do or what can you do to help change this as a pen tester or a red teamer? We need to educate managers, we need to educate clients, and we need to promote the valuable security of a pen test red team over just scanning all the things. <coughs> so we need clear understanding of terms. A vulnerability assessment is used to identify and categorize the vulnerabilities. So for an organization, it lets them quickly see the overall posture, their systems on their network. It might be the very first time they have a network diagram or a list of the items, but the key thing with a VA is that it's a listing of prioritized vulnerabilities. A penetration test is focused on breaching the security controls to achieve a goal, so such as Active Directory or PII data. So Jared Freitz was on Breaking Down Security recently, very recently, and his thing was a penetration test is to grab some sort of control, show the real impact of a penetration test. So in a side-by-side -side comparison, you guys can see it, a list, which is great if, if you're a really uh, low maturity type organization and then a penetration test is goal-oriented. So a vulnerability assessment uses Nessus and Burp. I had someone say a Burp suite scan is a penetration test. And that's the term again. So with penetration testing, we do use Nessus, we do use Burp, we use Metasploit, reverse shells, SQL map. It's, it's a whole different kettle of fish. So we need to explain to our managers that yes, a VA is easy and cheap. Right? Has, its, has its own value. But a pen test can add much more and probably bring in more money. And then you can show the real impact. I actually didn't have notes, I added that just before as far as looking at the slide. But it shows the real impact. It can help people get budget for their security team. It can say, hey, I've told you about this. You didn't think it was anything, but they just popped the shell or were able to steal data just by chaining a few exploits. So you can understand the real impact of bypassing security controls. So all in all, I, I ask everyone to help fight the good fight. And uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter or throw them out here. Thank you very much.
Does anybody have any questions? Um, with B-Sides and DEF CON and, and Black Hat getting so popular, do you, do you think that um, we are not gaining more talent? Uh, or do you think that the security is, uh, we're more aware of security problems and that is more of the problem rather than gaining talent and we just can't keep up with it? Ooh, good question. Probably a mix. There's obviously more awareness of security, but an everyday user, uh, a, a girl I was dating was like, um, you do lock picking at a conference? Like, the average user has absolutely no idea. So from a pen testing point of view, or even, say, a client that we're talking to doesn't have that idea, they, they want a VA, they want their security checked, it's education. But then you're also limited to what they want versus what they should want, and everything like that. So you mentioned keeping track and hiring good talent, but in a day where vendors will sell you certifications and paper mills just pump out cybersecurity, yeah. master's degrees, how do you uh, suggest we identify and maintain that talent pool? How, as a company, how to maintain the talent or how to go through HR and identify crappy certs? Second one, get your OSCP, done. No, but like, even the GXPN was a multiple choice exam and because I did the OSCP really prepared me for that. I think something more practical and hands on is a lot better than something multiple choice. Regarding crappy certificates, I, I'm not sure if we need a governing body on your pen tester needs this. Or there's been a lot of chat about interviews and how you should do it with tests and hands on. I think there was a couple online gave away the type of questions they ask and practical hands-on uh, exercises for their job interviewees. So maybe along that line you can test skills versus your uh, what's a TCP packet do with CNAC uh, and things like that. Thank you. Yep. So I really like that you differentiated penetration testing as a goal-based. Um, I, I like to explain it that a pen test provides a path Yes. Uh, as opposed to a listing of, of issues, and I think that's sort of what you illustrated there. Uh, so you said to discuss. So I think one thing that you didn't really cover is something that's in the middle of those two, which we like to commonly refer to as just security assessment, it may incorporate a vulnerability assessment. But with validation? With validation, yes, but additionally looking for configuration and design flaws. So, say, so something that a vulnerability assessment doesn't necessarily test is something like egress filtering, yeah. which is a network-based security control, but isn't necessarily a vulnerability you know, isn't, there's not going to be a Nessus plugin for egress filtering. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? So it's even process and procedures and things like that. And if, I think some of those things, like a security assessment, you can develop a methodology that can be done more quickly. And for those smaller companies that don't have the money to pay for multiple people and some sort of threat emulation exercise, like a pen test, uh, can be able to afford to get a whole lot more value out of than just a list of vulnerabilities that doesn't necessarily really improve their overall security posture. Yeah, and that's the frustration. I certainly agree that I shouldn't have to dump your domain control passwords to tell you you should make the complexity longer and you have shit passwords. Thank you. All right, I think we have time for mo one more question. Anyone? Not really a question, but uh, I would like to um, fill in on, on your comments. Uh, and that's the threat assessment. Uh, how do you put the vulnerabilities that you find in context so they can be used in the penetration path so that you can reach your assets? You mean from a VA? Uh, it's also in, in between. I mean, if yeah. you think of a risk assessment, then you have uh, like your, your assets, and you define your assets and how much they're worth. Yeah, well, uh, but then you're, you're up uh, above the technical level. But if you, if you don't really care about how much stuff costs, yeah. and if you keep it on the technical level, then I usually call it a threat assessment. What uh, vulnerabilities will always be there? Credentials will all, always yeah. be found. Uh, so if you have that and all the other vulnerabilities that you fi find in a vulnerability assessment, um, how does that lead to a uh, compromising an asset? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I'm going to take a mulligan on that. <laughs> no, but um, I think it's like risk appetite and everything like that. Based on your vulnerabilities, what you accept, what don't you accept, 
different mitigations pr prevention. I know with some PCI or audit, it's like, yes, this is a risk, but we have this mitigating control and we can detect, prevent. I'm not too sure on how to answer your question, but that's my beating around the bush answer, I guess. All right, thank you, Hayden. Yep, thank you. Let's give him a round of applause.